Well, hi there, guys. This is your host, Tidy Gesture. Thanks for checking out my video. Today, we're going to be doing a full review of a book called Stalingrad, The Faithful Siege, 1942-1943. Its author is Anthony Beaver, and we're going to be doing a review of this book since I had finished it on my last trip out of the country and uh, thought it would be nice to give you my thoughts and views. The way this uh, review is going to be outlined is basically we're going to talk about the way the book is, um, the format of the book, and then uh, talk about some of the positives and negatives about the book, and then give you some uh, examples of uh, the uh, writing and, and the information involved inside the book. And then finally, I'll give you my final review of the, uh, or my final um, verdict on the book. So I'm going to call this uh, review, actually, um, The Suffering of the Human Spirit is really the name of this uh, review, because if you get done reading this book, you're really going to realize just how much suffering... Uh, was involved in this battle from both sides, obviously, and not only that, but also all the civilians and everyone in between. Uh, really comes down to uh, the human spirit in this book. I feel that it's kind of the one thing that I would take away is the suffering that was involved in the decisions that were made based upon this operation. So uh, it's very interesting that uh, reading through this book, you get to that, you get to that conclusion that it was just something more than anything you could possibly imagine. It was something way, way more than what you could even envision uh, happening uh, and to be part of that would have been just a life-altering experience, obviously. All right, so the way the uh, book was laid out, let's go to that. So uh, Anthony Beaver had, uh, designed the book with a uh, list of illustrations and maps in the beginning. And then afterwards is part one, The World Will Hold Its Breath, basically a chapter about uh, 1941 and Operation Barbarossa and what had happened during that, and the things they learned or didn't learn, or the things they assumed or didn't assume for both sides, both the German and the Soviet, or the uh, Russian side. And uh, it's quite interesting there. So then part two, Barbarossa on relaunched is part two, which was basically going to be your summer and win winter offensive for 1942 and the beginning of 1943. Uh, and, of course, that starts uh, the uh, siege of uh, Stalingrad. Then part three, the Faithful City, a chapter devoted to information about what had happened during the city and the final push into the city and the final defenses and uh, the struggle uh, therein. Part four was Zhukov's Trap, which is basically outlines, talks about the decisions and how and the whys of uh, Operation Uranus there and the encirclement of the 7th Army and the prelude leading up to that. And of course, the fifth part, the subjugation of the 6th Army. Then afterwards, uh, you have the apex uh, appendix A and B. Uh, you have a tremendous list of references, uh, the source notes, uh, select biography, bibliography, sorry. And then, of course, an index, which is nice if you want to reference or look something up specifically. It's always nice to have a reference or an index. Uh, it was 493 total pages. Of that, there is a total of uh, 1,000. I should have had this information written down. Apologize for that. But it is uh, 431 pages of actual um, novel. So... 431, and you can see quite a few pages of references and notes and bibliography and index afterwards. 
So that's the outline of the, uh, the book and uh, thought that would be interesting for people. So let's talk about some of the uh, positives that I uh, like about the book. All right, so uh, the positives. What I really, really, really took away and really liked about the Stalingrad um, novel by Anthony Beaver is that it was written from multiple views in mind. So you got your high command with Hitler and Stalin and their views, desires, and wants. So you got to see and understand the upper echelon of what their thoughts were behind the scenes and what their desires were and why and how this became such a massive struggle. Uh, but you also got to see it through the generals and the uh, high-level strategists. You got to see it through the operations and planning phases. You, but you also got to see it with boots on the ground. So views from the infantrymen, uh, quite a few references to specific things that happened to different uh, individuals during the battle. Uh, you also got to hear and see from the support personnel, such as the nurses, the doctors, uh, the, the, uh, the log logistics uh, supervisors, uh, the pilots, uh, everyone that was involved in this. Uh, it's not just uh, a novel where you're hearing a, B, C, D, you're kind of investigating all of the different aspects of it. So I really enjoyed that because um, it's not just over and over and over, page after page after page of, of logistics or planning or general's views or strategy from that. You get to see multiple different views, high level view all the way down to the civilians that were inside the city and you hear about stories about uh, just, um, you know, some of the, the young seven and eight year olds that were civilians there in the city that would uh, trade some of the German um, infantry men would trade some food if the seven and eight year olds would take, um, take their water bottles to the river so they could have some water and uh, bring them back. Well, then the, then the uh, Russians had found out that these civilians were doing that. So they were shooting the seven and eight year olds that they were just trying to make a living. So, I mean, you hear from, you know, everyone in between all the way up from the Supreme high commanders, Hitler and Stalin, all the way down to uh, seven and eight year olds and the infantry men that were facing off against one another. So I enjoyed that part of the book very much. Uh, being able to understand and, and comprehend what was going on between all the different levels. The second positive that uh, I can relate to you guys is the, it's in-depth lists of reasons why this battle fe uh, failed and why it was impo uh, so important to both sides. Uh, Anthony Beaver talks about the command structures and the way the countries viewed their military operations and how they structured their hierarchy and how both, uh, you know, at one point uh, Hitler and Stalin had taken command of both of their armies because they felt that they were being betrayed by their generals and their, their leaders and uh, so talked about the command structure talks about the decisions that were made. At first, Stalingrad wasn't even uh, part of uh, the summer offensive for 1942. It was just going to be a, a waylay. But uh, at one point, uh, Hitler decides to make a speech about Stalingrad and how important it was. Well, then once he did that, <laughs> then, of course, his, uh, his view is that, you know, the people are trusting what he says and so you know if he says that he can do this then we have to be able to do it so uh, planning for the operation or lack thereof uh, so that was kind of important too in the planning phases and what was expected and what they thought the outcome was the relaunch of operation Barbarossa in 1942 uh, Hitler and all the Germans 
high commands were under the impression that uh, the Russia had barely anything left and that uh, they, you know, they were at the breaking point and another summer offensive would be able to do the knockout blow and that, um, you know, they would, uh, after success or success after success, they would finally capitulate and, and uh, you know, kind of uh, not be able to uh, withstand the German advance anymore. Uh, and then, of course, a lot goes into this, which we talked about just a minute ago, the egos of Hitler and Stalin and the fact that, you know, Hitler uh, decided that, oh, Stalingrad was going to be a good place to uh, attack and uh, take over. And uh, Stalin's ego of uh, not letting the civilians leave the city because he felt it was their responsibility to defend the city and fortify it for his men. And, uh, you know, the whole reason behind the not one step back uh Oper uh, um, not operation, but the uh, philosophy of not one step back uh, because of Stalin's egos. And you have these two supreme commanders, Hitler and Stalin, that, you know, because of their supreme egos, and they want, you know, basically they both know that this is a life and death struggle between both of them. One of them is going to win and one of them is going to lose. And, uh, you know, so... That was quite interesting as well. And then the, the history that preceded this battle that caused the outcome that it did. The history that preceded this battle, the fact that uh, in 1941, in winter 1941, uh, there was a German army that was surrounded by Russians as well, and they resupplied them through the air. And they you know, were able to keep that army together throughout the winter times because of this the Air Force supplying them and, you know, how that decision, oh, we did it once before, we can do it again. You know, when the Sixth Army got surrounded, oh, well, if we did it before, we can do it once again. Uh, you know, and how the history, you know, if you did something before, you just assume, well, I did it once before, I can do it once again. And, you know, just with the, the different operations, uh, you know, planning the operation and, you know, if we we push on this city and we've, you know, we've knocked them out of Kiev and we've knocked them out of Kursk and we've knocked them out of this. We'll go into Stalingrad and we'll be able to do the same thing. We'll go in there, we'll fight them and they'll retreat and we'll have the city and it should be just a simple little battle. And then, uh, you know, so the history that leads up to the decisions that they make that caused this massive uh, operation. And now let's talk about a little bit of the negatives. Not very many, I would say, uh, but for some reason, lice for me was used way too much in this book. I don't know if Anthony Beaver has a lice fetish or what it is, but it seems like every single chapter, every you know, 30 or 40 pages, there was another incident with lice and they talked about it over and over and over and over again throughout the book. I get it. I understand lice was an important, you know, a detriment to the troops and such, but, you know, it just seems like he used this constantly over and over again. And again, this is just a little nitpick. Um, you know, it's just, it's like, okay, I get the understanding that lice were, were an issue and the problems and okay, you, you kill an enemy, you take their, their, their stuff from them, their clothing, which is covered with lice and you're covered with lice and you know how the issue was, but you didn't need to go over and over and over and over again about it. Uh, second thing is I would have liked more maps throughout the book. So, uh, yeah, I think there's, you know, there's a map reference section. Uh, but I would have liked, you know, different maps uh, in the different chapters when we're talking about specific operations. Uh, would have been nice to have more maps throughout the book. Uh, that's all I'm saying. It's just, it's, it's. You could go back and reference the other maps, but it's like it would have been nice just to have these maps in the different sections where they were needed and more of them, more detailed. And even if he had to draw them himself from other maps, that would have been, you know, something hire somebody to do that or whatever. 
Uh, I would have liked more time written on the stalemate period. The actual, uh, the actual concentration in the city. There was, you know, obviously as we talked about the different chapters, you know, um, there's only what five or six chapters in the book. One was, uh, you know, 1941 Operation Barbarossa, which is important to what happened in Stalingrad because we just talked about the. Uh, you know, the history of what the Germans had learned and what they had assumed was based upon what happened in 1941. So that was important, yes, but I uh, would have liked more detailed information about the city and the struggle that had happened in the stalemate period, what I call the stalemate period, and where both sides had in, engaged in the city. And uh, so I just would have liked more written about that. Uh, I would have liked a longer cause and effect of what this event did to alter the course of the war. So, uh, you know, it ended with chapter six, and that was the subjugation of the Sixth Army and the destruction of it, and what had happened to the troops afterwards, and what happened to Paulus, and, uh, you know, the views from Hitler, and the views from Stalin, and the views from the different generals, and all that. But there wasn't any anything really about, because of this event, you know, later on, the Germans couldn't produce enough tanks or they were too strung out because of this or, you know, just more um, cause and effect that would have been uh, what had happened after this battle. Because obviously it was kind of, everyone assumes it was kind of the turning point to the East Front was Stalingrad and the... Um, the East Front kind of uh, turned after this time period, late 1942, early 1943, and it would have been nice to know how specifically this battle ended up changing the course of what happened throughout the war. And then lastly, this book can be overwhelming because of the human tragedy involved. You're dealing with page after page after page of suffering and, and weird not weird. Weird's kind of the wrong way. Just, um, you know, you, you hear about this soldier that is crawling around the crawling on the ground and uh, the Germans are retreating from one of the villages or towns or whatever. And they're driving in one of their Kuf wagons and uh, they drive up to him and, you know, they're they're stopped to help him out. And then he's like, no, I'm too late for me. The the Russians are right here. You guys got to get out of here. And so they take off and leave them there, you know, and it's just like page after page after page of that, where you hear about the individuals of, of that dealt with the cold and, and they dealt with the, um, the struggles to keep alive, the struggle of fighting, the, the effort involved, the uh, not hearing from home and not knowing what's going on and hearing negative reports and all this. So it can be overwhelming. I'm just going to say, uh, if you're not used to that kind of a book or you're not aware of what's going on, that can be kind of overwhelming. Like I said, in the beginning of this, this is really a review of the, the, um, the suffering of the human spirit is, is basically what this book is. It's, it's, it's in-depth, detailed information about human suffering because that's what this event was. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now we're gonna just give you a couple examples of what we talked about and uh, you know, kind of give you some understanding of uh, you know, some of the paragraphs or whatever that you're gonna be reading in Stalingrad. So he wrote of the almost incredible suffering of all those involved in Stalingrad whether soldier or civilian, but then quickly dismissed, dismissed any notion of sentimentality. These things cannot be helped. The struggle being waged is for life and death. This is Anthony Beaver, Stalingrad, page 176. So you can see what we're talking about here, incredible suffering and, and the lack of caring that there's human suffering going on all the way from Hitler and Stalin all the way down to the infantrymen where at one point you just... You don't, it just becomes too overwhelming for you to even comprehend all of what's happening. And you can't, you can't go, oh, well, we've got these Russians or Germans prisoners. What are we going to do with them? Oh, okay. Well, you know, it just comes to the point where, you know, you have to remove 
the um, the humanality out of it and just turn it into a robotic uh, situation if you want to stay alive. Uh, let's go to the next one. It is severely cold, Grossman noted as he accompanied the advancing troops. Snow and the freezing air ice up your nostrils. Your teeth ache. There are frozen Germans. Their bodies undamaged along the road we follow. It wasn't us who killed them. The cold did. Anthony Beaver, Stalingrad, page 361 to 362. So again, the, you know, just another example of uh, some of the information you're going to find and talked about. Obviously, we haven't even brought it up very much during this review, but obviously the weather being such an important part of this and, uh, you know, it just gets to the point where, you know, you have to think to yourself <laughs> if you were actually there and you're going through day after day of being frozen, cold, freezing cold and not getting any food and having to struggle for every step you take and every, um, every breath that you take and just you know it's you see those around you that fall and understanding you know what it takes to make it through all that i mean he talks anthony beaver talks about soldiers that had purposely shot themselves to get out of that situation those that were executed because they found out that they had shot themselves those people that couldn't deal with it and surrendered to the enemy uh, or tried to surrender to the enemy and were shot by their own troops and you know you get to the point where you have to start thinking what it would take to live through three and a half to four months of not being able to eat not being able to um, be warm to be freezing cold and to be felt like you're being left alone and that you don't your life doesn't matter to anyone and, and it just becomes so overwhelming and Anthony Weaver does a great job of describing all of this uh, throughout his book and brings you to the conclusion of what we talked about that this this is about the human spirit and what those that made it through the very few that did make it through what they had to endure and what they had to go through and lastly, another example here is the Army's exact losses are still uncertain, but there is no doubt that Stalingrad campaign represented the most catastrophic defeat here and through experienced in German history. The 6th Army and the 4th Panzer Army had effectively been destroyed. Anthony Beaver, Stalingrad, page 398. So that just explains pretty much why one of the reasons why Stalingrad was so important was that it was it was the most expensive in human life cost a catastrophic defeat not only in the in the loss in manpower and the loss in machinery but the loss in the prestige of the German army the loss of Hitler's um, uh, Hitler's kind of uh, persona with the German people up until that point he's been absolutely correct in just about everything you know we're gonna we're gonna conquer this place and they do it and we're gonna take over this place and we're gonna do it and everyone's been like yay or they understand and now all of a sudden you know Hitler says they're gonna take over Stalingrad and now he's they have to of course Hitler never admitted it but um they have to admit defeat now and they had lost this and they would not you know propaganda wise they would not publish this or give any information and and so all of a sudden you know it comes out that all those lives were lost during this uh, operation and the human the civilians back in Germany started to find out and they started questioning their supreme leader who up to that point has been leading them down a path of excellence right so uh obviously another reason why stalingrad is such an important part and then lastly let's give our overall rating of the stalingrad the faithful siege 1942-1943 dun, 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 dun. it is 
Here's my overall rating. The positives greatly outweigh the negatives. Again, the few of the nitpicks that I had about you know not having enough maps, the overuse of lice, uh, the way that it's over the book can be overwhelming. These are greatly outweighed by the writing, the the information, the 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 way it gets you thinking and understanding more about this battle. Of course, everyone that understands World War II, they have the general concepts of Stalingrad. Oh yeah, the Germany attacked, the Russians stood their ground, they wouldn't retreat across the river, and then eventually they counterattacked and surrounded the Sixth Army and destroyed them. Everyone understands that, but to understand the great um, hows and whys, the, the decisions leading up to it that referenced, that made the decisions to do it again, and uh, you know the the suffering and and the civilians, the fact that civilians couldn't leave the city, uh, and uh, you know just about all the different things that had happened that you don't know about until you actually read this book has been, uh, uh, you know, the positives, uh, the way that the Anthony Beaver uses. Uh, you know, the high structure command between how, uh, Hitler and Stalingrad and the, the high level German command structure and the high level um, Russian structure and all the way down to the footman and the civilians and the doctors and the medics and the pilots and everyone else. You understand how their thoughts and what they were thinking and, you know, uh, I think there's a, even a paragraph in the book somewhere about a pilot who flew over uh, the pocket at one point when he sees it collapsing and he said something about this is the end of the German Reich within two years uh, Berlin will fall uh, so easy and uh, another positive it's easy reading it's always interesting because like I said it's not just page after page after page of you know the 114th uh, Panzer Division moved up this road and down to this valley and they encountered the you know, 267th Guards Rifle Division, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's easy reading because it's switching, it's switching your view between the high command structure down to the infantrymen, over to, and you know, talking about the doctors, talking about uh, the civilian life and all that. So it's always uh, changing the pace of the book. It's not just total operations. It's not just high command structure. It's, it's switching views for you that makes it easy reading and always interesting. So my final uh, verdict is if you have any interest in World War II on the East Front, this book should be on your bookshelf. I'm going to give it a final score of 4.4 of 5 stars. Uh, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I am an, a big Anthony Beaver fan. I own uh, quite a few of his books. In fact, I just got back from my overseas vacation and ended up only buying me two things on my trip. One of the two things was actually Anthony Beaver's Arnhem book that I found in the airport uh, bookstore when we were waiting for our flight to come back. I found Anthony Beaver's Arnhem book and I'm like, oh, I got to get this one because it's the only one I don't have. So I'm a big Anthony Beaver fan. So if you know that, you know I probably enjoy his writing style. I enjoy the way he outlines his books. In fact, I am now probably about 35 to 40% done with my next Anthony Beaver book, which is the D-Day Battle for Normandy. So we'll do a review of that when I get done. But overall, Stalingrad on the East Front, The Faithful Siege, 1942 to 1943. I'm going to rate it 4.4 .4 out of 5 stars. And if you have any interest, I would highly recommend you pick up this book and read it and check it out. It is well worth your time and... I find that it's it gives it gave me anyways uh, a, a World War II that um, you know World War II interest. I have interest in all World War II, and I have interest, and I know I, you know I'm not a, a historian or anything like that, but I consider myself probably way above average when it comes to detailed information about World War II and what had happened and the different events. But just reading this book, I learned so much more about Stalingrad and the battle and the reasons why and what had happened. And that was what really drove home to me uh, this book is, is 
you know, it's not just the operations. It's not just the views of the supreme commanders. It's not just the views of the infantrymen. It's not just the views from the civilians. It's the views from everyone involved. And you get a more complete and uh, com uh, more complete and thorough explanation and reasoning behind the understanding of what had happened and the outcome and what had happened. Uh, so I really, really highly recommend Stalingrad by Anthony Beaver, The Faithful Seas, 1942 to 1943. Be sure to leave your thoughts, comments, and suggestions. If you've read this book, I'd like to hear what you have to think. Uh, and of course, I would love to hear what you would rate this book if you were talking about five stars. Uh, what would you rate it? How many stars would you give it? And give me your thoughts and opinions. Um, on why you rate it that way. Maybe you're seeing the book in different, and I would like to, you know, I'd like to compare and contrast uh, my views with other views of this book, to be honest. Uh, whether you totally agree with me or totally disagree with me, I would love to hear from you. So, anyways, thanks for watching my uh, full review of Stalingrad, and we'll see you guys next time. The next review will be Anthony Beaver's D Day, the Battle for Normandy probably coming in the next week or two. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.